In this video, I'm going to tell you about some of the things that are going to happen to your hobby as you get older and some of the things you can do about it. So like most of you, I'm not getting any younger. For those of you who are getting younger, the less said about it, the better. I don't want to know. Uh, I am just a couple of years shy of half a century, and I've been doing this for a while. And as I've been doing it, I've been noticing that there are changes. And I'm not talking about puberty. I'm talking about I'm finding things a little bit more difficult within the hobby, within painting and building and all that kind of stuff for our miniatures that we like to do. I'm finding things more difficult now than they used to be. But there's things that you can do about that. One message I get from people pretty frequently is, um, I've, I, I think I, I shake too much. You know, this person's telling me that they shake too much to be able to paint miniatures and things like that because it's a detail-oriented thing. And there are a bunch of different things that you can do to help mitigate those situations a little bit. One of the first things to do is to maybe dial back on the caffeine a little bit just before you're going to paint. Like if you go downstairs with a pot of coffee, and by downstairs I mean into your hobby area, because that's where my hobby area is, but maybe your hobby area is upstairs, whatever. If you go into your hobby area with a pot of coffee, or a really big mug of coffee, or a giant big gulp soda, um, maybe try not doing that. Switch to water and see if that helps. Some people are not nearly as affected by caffeine as others. You may feel completely unaffected and it keeps you awake and alert like most people, but you may be finding that you've got some fine motor tremors that are resultant of that as you get older. So first things first, maybe dial back on the caffeine and see if that helps with the fine motor tremors. If not, then there's other things that you can do. To build a steady house, you need a steady foundation. And to paint a good model, you also need a steady foundation. This is not the way to paint. If you've got your arms kind of out like this and your hands apart and you're trying to paint, there's just about nobody who will be able to be real steady and do a lot of detail in that situation. The best way to get yourself so that you can be as steady as possible is to lock down as much as possible. First things first is to lock your elbows against your body. My chair at home actually that I hobby in has um, arms. This stool does not, but if it's got arms, sometimes you can actually attach your arms, your elbows to the arms and not attach them like, you know, you know, permanently, just, I mean, rest them there and get settled down. But if you don't have like higher arms or there's no arms in your chair at all, bring them in right like this on your torso and lock them in there and keep them tight. And then the next thing to do is when you start to paint, bring your hands together. You should never be doing this. You should never be hand apart painting like that. You should always have your hands together and be painting in this way. Locked elbows, locked arms, all this kind of stuff, keeping it together, the hands like this, and little motions, you can get incredible amounts of detail when you lock everything together like this. You also notice I'm holding the miniature with one of those holders. You can use one of these from Games Workshop. You can use one of these from uh, 3D printed something or other. There's lots of different things. I talked years ago about just using a pill bottle and some uh, poster putty, pachow. Those will help as well because having a big good grip on the model uh, allows you also to not, if I'm just holding the base like this, there's so much extra wiggle and that I'm having problems keeping things steady. But when I put it into this little clamp on this uh, holder, I've got a nice tight grip on it. And I'm also not touching the base and getting oils on the, you know, all that kind of jazz. But it just helps bringing everything together and painting this way is really what you need to do to keep your hands steadier. You may have some sort of condition or something that even that doesn't help. And that's understandable. But if you're starting as you just from natural aging, starting to notice it's harder to keep things, lock it all down, keep it together, and, and even bring your hands in like this if you can. And then you're going to find that you're going to have fewer tremors as you paint. Now, there's another related issue to this. You'll notice as I'm bringing everything in close like this, I'm quite close to my face. As again, I mentioned, I'm over the age of 40. I was told by my eye doctor several years back that I needed to get bifocals because I was having a hard time seeing up close. He said that the reasoning for that was not because there was something going wrong with my eyes due to whatever. It was just age. Inside your eye, there is a lens. And it is, for lack of a better term, 
sickness is not medical, it's squishy. There are muscles that ring the eye that can kind of squeeze it and stretch it and things like that so that you can focus near or far away. And that's how it works. Those muscles don't necessarily get old. What happens is the lens itself becomes less and less flexible as you age. My eye doctor told me that if you've never had glasses your entire life, generally around the age of 40, all of a sudden, you're going to be doing this. You're going to be looking at it like you want to read something and you keep moving it further and further away. And that, you've seen people do this, I'm sure, that is just a symptom of getting older. The lenses inside your eye can't focus as close anymore because the muscles cannot properly squeeze the lens to make it do what it needs to do because the lens has become less and less flexible. So what do you do? I would tell you to go out and get yourself some of those little reader glasses at the you know grocery store or at the drugstore or whatever so that you can look and paint closer. I have bifocals, which still, if I want to be real close to a model, my bifocals don't do the job. So it's, it's problematic. So in that situation, I have a tendency to look over the top of my glasses as I do this. There's a big problem with that, however. The more I look over the top of my glasses to get really, really close, the more I give myself an eye strain headache over time. Um, it's not like an ice cream headache. It's more up here, right around the eyes, and it is no fun. What I have done in the past uh, was I've taken ibuprofen before going into my hobby room to do the painting. Before you write that comment, I understand that that's a bad idea. Taking pain medication before the pain that you know you're about to cause yourself is not a great plan. So I've found a new solution, and that is these kind of weird spaceshipy things that I got on Amazon. If you want to get some on Amazon, and I do like them, and they're cheap, um, follow the link below. It's a uh, one of those links where I get a little bit of a tickle if you buy something, but it's no cost to you. These are magnifiers, and instead of the ones that you strap around your head to make you look like a goofball, these are the ones you wear like, a, like glasses and also kind of make you look like a goofball. I'm not going to lie, but they work super well for up close when you're painting, and they don't give you eye strain. And you can look around them if needs be, but they hold just in the right spot. You can also adjust them this way and this way, depending on, like if you need to flip them up and get them out of the way, or if you need to see, you know, just get them in the right angle for you. If you paint down here, then they need to be angled this way. The other ones don't do that as much that I've seen. Secondly, they come with a whole bunch of extra ones of different magnifications, and they allow you to be able to kind of pick and choose and figure out what you want. There's even a light in there, uh, which I don't generally use because then you have to put batteries in it and it weighs a little heavier on my face. But light's important. When I was a kid, I'd be reading a comic book or something, and my mom or my dad would say, well, turn on a light. You can't, you can't read in that, in that darkness, which was actually not true. It seems that kids can see in the dark better than adults. As you get older, it becomes more and more difficult for you to read text, look at fine details in darker situations than when you were a kid. Now, most of us use some sort of light, obviously, to paint our models. And I generally almost always say you want to use a daylight balance light because a daylight balance light really helps with color translation and making sure, but it, that's, that's not, it has nothing to do with the getting older bit. Getting a lot of light, getting it kind of close if you can to the models that you're working on will really help you be able to see the model better. It will also help with eye strain, but really seeing the details and making sure that the paint's going exactly where you want it to go, that's really important. I use this little light sometimes when I travel. Um, actually, Sam turned me on to it, and it's got a rechargeable battery in it. Honestly, if it's not plugged in, it's not very bright. When you plug it in, it gets a lot brighter, but it's a tiny little thing, uh, and I can take it, throw it in a bag, and go wherever I need to with it. But when I'm sitting at my hobby desk, I have multiple lights going on. And I'm not just talking about like a couple. I usually have an overhead light that's quite bright, daylight balanced, two smaller lights on the sides that are also daylight balanced because you're trying to get rid of shadows. The more shadow area you've got, the harder it is to figure out where to paint in there. And unless you, get, you know, wear the light on your chest shining away, that's sometimes the area where you're trying to paint is the area that the light's not coming from. The light can be coming from here and from here and all that stuff, but you're not painting the back side of your model, you're painting the front side of your model. So if you can get adjustable lights to kind of bring in a little bit that don't get too hot, LEDs are gonna be my suggestion. That'll really help you to light up the model so that you can see a lot more detail when you get in there and start working. So between 
getting something to steady the model and thinking about that, getting something that helps you to see the model more closely and also light it up even a little bit more, these three things can go, in my opinion, a long way towards allowing you to keep enjoying your miniature painting hobby for hopefully a long time into the future.